where he stands where I am now and sees you there. But say, what to thine old news? Why, Petruchio is coming in a new hat and old jerkin. Candle cases, one buckle, another land, another lace. An old rusty sword taken out of town's armory, with a broken hilt and chapless with two broken pants. His horse nipped with an old mothy saddle and stirrups of no kindled. Besides, possessed with the glanders and like to muse like the chine, troubled with the lamp house, infected with old fortunes, full of wind gals, sped with sparrows, raged with the yellows, past cure of the fines, star spoiled with the staggers, begone with the bats, swagged in the backs, <laughs> and shoulders shattered, <laughs> near legs before, and with the helm, which, being restrained to keep him from stumbling, hath often been burst and new repaired with knots, one girth sometimes pierced, and a woman's crupper of rouleau, which has thou two letters for her name, fairly set down in studs, and here on there pierced with buckhead. Who comes with him? Oh, sir, his lackey, for all the world's caprisoned like the horse, with the linen stock on one leg and a cursy boot horse on the other. Guarded with a red and blue list, an old hat and the humor of forty fancies prickled. Isn't it a for a feather? A monster, a very monster in apparel, and not like the Christian footboy or a gentleman's lackey. Just some odd humor pricks him to this fashion, yet oftentimes he goes but mean. I am glad he's come. How so are he comes? Why, sir, he comes not. Didst thou say he comes? That Petruchio came. Aye, that Petruchio came. No, sir, I say his horse comes with him, on his back. Why, that's all one. Nay, by say Jamie, I hold you a penny. A horse and a man is more than one, and yet not many. Where be these gallons? Who's at home? We are welcome, sir. And yet I come not well. And yet you not have not. Not so well apparelled as I wish you were. Were I better, I should rush thus. But where is Kate? Where is my lovely bride? How does my father? Gentles, methinks you frown. And wherefore gaze this goodly company as if they saw some wandrow monument, some common or unusual prodigy? Why, sir, you this is your wedding day. First were we sad, fearing you would not come, now sadder that you have come so unprovided. Fie doth this habit, shame to your estate, and eyesore to our solemn festival. And tell us what occasion of import hath all so long de detained you from your wife, and sent you hither so unlike yourself. Tedious it were to tell, and harsh to lean suffice. I am come to keep my word, though in some part enforced to digress. Which at more leisure I will so excuse, as you shall, be well satisfied with all. But where is Kate? I stay too long from here. The morning wears. Tis time where we are at church. Be not your bride in these unrelevant unre robes. Go to my chamber. Put on clothes of mine. Not, I believe me. Thus I'll visit her. But thus, I trust you, you will not marry her. Good sooth, even thus. Therefore had done with words. To me she's married, not unto my clothes. Can I repair with what she will never in me, as I can change these poor occupants, twere me for Kate and better for myself, but what a fool I am to chat with you, when I should bid good morrow to my bride, and seal the title with a lovely kiss. He hath, he hath some meaning in his mad attire. We will persuade him, be it possible, to put a better eye he go to, go to church. I laugh to him, and see event of this. But, sir, to love concerneth us to add her father's liking, which to bring to pass, as I before departed to your worship. I am to get a man, and he shall be in Centio of Pisa, and make assurance in Padua of greater sums, I promise. So quietly enjoy your hope. Marry sweet Bianca, and conserve. Were not the fellow schoolmaster, doth watch Bianca's steps so narrow. T'were good, methinks, steal your marriage. I performed, let the world say no. I'll keep mine own, despite the world. That by degrees we mean to look into it. Watch with vantage for business. Well overreach the graybeard, Grumio. The, the narrow, prying father, Manola. The quaint musician, Amoris, Lydio. All for master's sake.
In lines, in lines 40 through 50, Act 3, Scene 2 of the Shakespearean play, The Taming of the Shrew, Petruchio is taming Catherine by showing up late and in inappropriate clothing to their wedding. Catherine exit, exits weeping because Petruchio is embarrassing her by showing up late to the wedding. Baptista is angry with Petruchio for being so late and for embarrassing his daughter, Catherine. Baptista does not blame Catherine for weeping. In the beginning of the passage, Biondola runs into the wedding and explains how Petruchio is not wearing appropriate clothing. He tells them he is late to the wedding and is wearing clothing that is not proper. Ba Baptista, Baptista is not pleased with what he is wearing when he arrives. Baptista explains how he does not like how he is late or his bad clothing choice. By dressing up poorly and arriving late to the wedding, Petruchio is taming Catherine. Petruchio finds various ways of taming Catherine, including embarrassing her.